Okay, Apple finally dropped the next beta of 18.1 in the form of beta 6. Now with this, we're finally getting a few new things, including sleep apnea detection. That's been hinted and teased for the last couple of betas and announced earlier in last month. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at this build and really kind of finalize the release schedule. Let's go. So iOS 18.1 beta 6 has finished installing as you can see here and the first thing I want to do actually is to talk about these build sizes and this is coming in just a little under a gig which is somewhat large for a sixth beta. So moving past that that would traditionally mean that you should see some new features and sure enough we do have some new in here but let's talk about the build number first. Jumping right into settings, general, and about and clicking on iOS version, you can see this is actually an A build. If you guys are new to the channel or unfamiliar with how Apple actually dictates their betas, you always want a letter A or closest to the beginning of the alphabet in order to know how close you are to a final beta. So this being an A build with a full build number of 22B506A, signifies this very well may be the last beta we get before the actual RC or release candidate version is released in the next couple of weeks. So getting that right out of the way, right from Jump Street, today is October 7th. We have heard that Apple will be releasing this on the 28th. So that leaves a couple of options. We will either get another beta on the 14th or we will skip next week and get the release candidate build on the 21st with the full release the following Monday, the 28th. Apple is going to be having some sort of announcements for Macs and possibly the iPad mini this month. That could tie in to this release as well. So keep that in mind. Obviously everything's in flux. Nobody knows what Apple truly is going to do, but if history repeats, this could be what we're looking at. So expect a final RC in the next two weeks and then the actual release to the public on the 28th. Now, aside from that, we did get quite a few new splash screens. I'm going to go back into photos and just show you one. You can see what it was for mail itself. There were new ones that came to mail, the app store and messages. And if you hop in, you should be able to see that as well. And you can see it's advertising a more powerful search. Use natural language and descriptive app tags to find what you're looking for more easily. Pretty simple, basic. That's all that that broke down. I think what a lot of people are going to be interested in are some of the new control center, center toggles and sleep apnea and breathing disturbances being finally live in this build. So jumping into control center first, you can see we actually added one of them right here. That is a new standalone satellite connectivity option. But if you go into add a control, we not only got that one, we actually got another toggle for airdrop itself. So let's type this in. And you can see it's a standalone toggle right there for that. And in addition to those, we got two new measurement apps, one just measure and one for level. So pretty cool. I really like how they're breaking apart all of these so you can piecemeal exactly what you want to add to your control center to really customize it for what works for you. And you don't have to keep everything grouped here in this old horrible control center for uh, connectivity options. But beyond all of this also, jumping into the health app is where you're going to find that new exciting feature that was teased and talked about, and that is sleep apnea detection. And you can see it right here. Sleep apnea notifications. Apple Watch can look for breathing disturbances and notify you if it identifies signs of sleep apnea. So obviously, as it breaks down here alone, you will need an Apple Watch running the fourth beta, at least, of watchOS 11.1. So once you have two of those devices, it will sync up and you can set up everything right here as you need and you will be able to go. So let's save that for later. You can receive a notification if Apple Watch identifies signs of sleep apnea. Are these notifications for you? You can run through it. We're not going to go set it up right now, but I wanted to let you know it is currently present. There is a new notification icon if you have group notifications turned on. Um, basically a little new badge. I wish I had something to show you right now. I don't. I apologize for that. But you also do have a new dot notification that comes in the dynamic island when you are using something that does 
require some sort of um, microphone or video so that yellow and green dot that pops up that it will pull it up there so if you type in here and turn something on you will see there is now once you turn off the mic a fade out notification I'm not sure if you saw it there let's do it one more time there it goes so just something subtle that has been added nothing crazy or major but just something to be aware of Aside from that, that is a lot of the most recent changes we saw in this 6 beta. Again, pretty surprising we even got some new features here and some other tweaks. Usually at this point, it is simply bug fixes and back-end improvements, so still good to see. Definitely glad to see Apple has made some progress. Battery life is always the next big question. We'll put it through its paces and check how it's going to do in the coming days. But stability and jumping all around like we always do, everything has been pretty decent. So let us know in the comments down below. How well was beta 5 working and how well is beta 6 working if you've downloaded it to your device already? Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.